Tell me what denim is right now. Oh, okay, okay. So I've seen so many great videos on how denim is made, usually out of cotton. But in order to make it blue, originally you needed this, which is indigo, which is actually a plant. And in addition to cotton, this was slavery's other cash crop, the one we don't talk about. Before synthetic dyes, if you wanted to dye something blue, generally you needed indigo. So it was a huge moneymaker. As soon as Europeans colonized the Americas, they were going to grow the thing that made the most money. Indigo really burst onto the scene with the three plantations run by 16-year-old Eliza Lucas that, of course, ran off of the labor of enslaved peoples, who also brought the knowledge of how to even grow indigo in the first place. In fact, according to this article, it was indigo that was a major driver towards growing the slave trade in the southern colonies in the first place. According to Donna Hardy, the president of the International Center for Indigo Culture, the governors in Georgia decided to legalize slavery in order to keep the indigo industry growing. In the 1700s, indigo was more valuable than cotton and sugar. Some say more powerful than the gun. And for a time, people were using indigo cakes as money. And before the denim that we know today, indigo dyed cotton cloth was called this, an incredibly coarse and uncomfortable fabric that was the fabric that enslaved people were allowed to wear which in addition to being really cheap and uncomfortable, also served as a visual marker of enslaved status. It was the production of this cloth that led to today's denim and the infrastructure of today's denim history. And even the US's entire fashion economy. Miko Underwood writes that what we recognize as staple pieces of a denim collection, the overall jumpsuit, trucker jacket, and work shirt, all originated on the plantations of the American South. And of course, the other big ingredient is cotton which was booming, eventually outpaced indigo, especially as synthetic dyes were invented and indigo wasn't really needed as much anymore. But the story does not end there. No, no, no. Because as Zoe Washington writes, the history of denim is also rooted in black activism. And there is so, so much to talk about there. Lastly, Miko Underwood runs this really cool project called the Denim Collective, which explores this topic as a part of her sustainable denim company, Oak and Acorn from Harlem, NYC. So go check it out. We probably don't talk about the indigo part of slavery very much because a lot of people don't know what it is, and the vast majority of the time synthetic dyes are used for it now. But it's an enormous chunk of this history, which is why it is really important to